Hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to be putting up some meat today. I went to the grocery store. We have one here that has an anniversary sale every year. And they had meat, vegetables, fruits, all kinds of stuff on sale. So I stocked up. And so I am going to can a bunch of the meat and some squash and zucchini. I already did some strawberry jam that I showed you guys um, on another video, but I'm going to get you down here so you can see what I'm doing. And we're even going to use my new electric canner. So we'll do a little review on that and see how it goes. I'm excited not to heat up my kitchen quite so bad with my stove. So let's get you down here so you can see what I'm doing. This is a pork butt that I picked up. It does have the bone in it, so I had to cut the bone out, but this is only half of it. And I'm cutting it into chunks like that. They're about, that one's about an inch and three quarters maybe. I'm trying to keep them somewhat small. So I'm going to be putting these in pint jars. It's just me and my husband. So if you have a large family, you might need to do quart jars, but I'm doing the pints. So I'm just, these are just nice and clean. I'm just going to start filling them up with this meat. And you can usually get the, the rule of thumb is a pound per pint. This was a 7.65 pound, but I'm going to have to take some out because of the bone because I did have a small amount of bone in there. You still want to keep headspace in these. I have got that one pretty compacted in there, and I don't want it to, to go above that ring. I even have it below that ring a little bit. It calls from inch to an inch and a half. This is going to make a lot of juice because of the broth that's going to come off of that while it's cooking with all that fat in there. But that's all I do. I'm going to leave a lot of that fat on there, give it a little bit of flavor. It helps give it some of that juice that we need. Makes it more tender, if you ask me. Now, see that piece? There's not a whole lot of meat in there. It's mostly fat. So, I'm going to save that one. And I'll use it whenever I'm making up some stock or something. This cork butt, whenever you take it out of here, it's already going to be cooked, obviously, because we're pressure canning it. But also, it's going to be kind of shredded. I need one that's not quite so thick. Um, it's going to be like a pulled pork once you get it cooked in here. There we go. That worked out better. You can put it in stews. You can make pulled pork sandwiches. You can make all kinds of stuff, y'all. You can season it if you want. If you want to put your seasonings in here, you can. If you want to just add some salt, if you don't want to put anything, you don't have to put anything in here. Just don't do barbecue sauce. That is one thing that you really should not do is barbecue sauce because of all the acid that's in it. So, I would, I would not do barbecue sauce. Is he going to fit just like that? Pretty darn close, huh? I think I'm going to get more than five of these out of here. Well, I would say that bone was really not that big. So I might get... Goodness, I might get more than that. Maybe it's a quart that they're saying. A pound per quart. Because I am getting... Way more than just seven quarts out of this. Way more. Because this was only half of it. I'm going to have to get a little bit more. 
See, here's my other half right here. And that bone, it's not that big. It goes right there. I just need a little bit more off of here. Finish up these jars. Now be careful when you start working with this and your hands get slick. Be careful starting to cut again because your fingers will slide right off of there. And one more jar and I'll be back with y'all. Okay, guys, you see I have these all filled up with some pork, but I'm going to put in some canning salt, just a half a teaspoon in each one. You can put whatever spices you want in here. When I do my second batch, I will probably... Put in maybe some uh, Lipton onion soup mix so that when I'm ready to make some uh, stew, it's pretty much ready to go. So there we have it. Now, I'm going to take my little cannon towel. I'll call this my cannon towel. These are what my granny always used. Little flour sack towels. This is vinegar in my little jar here. I'm going to go through and clean all these off. I've got to make sure there's no meat and there's no salt. And also feel to make sure that none of these jars have a crack or anything in them. And they all feel good. Now I'm just going to take my lids. You do not have to get these warm. We're going to be pressure canning. Just put them on top. This one is a small mouth. Put these on just fingertip tight. That means you don't want to go cranking down on them. This one has a bend in it. I'm going to get rid of that one. Well, come on. There we go. I need a lid for that. Okay, I am excited about using this. Let me get y'all over here so you can see what I'm talking about. I am in no way sponsored by this. I'm just trying it out and excited to, to find a new way to do this without eating up the entire kitchen. It already has racks in here. This one is for putting on top of other jars. This is the one that goes in the bottom. So I'll put that one down in the bottom first. And then we just take these little guys and set them in here. Just like that. Now, I believe it said I need four cups of water. Let's look and make sure. Because y'all are learning with me. Let's see here. 
I'm sorry, eight cups of hot water. So let's get this going. All right, we have eight cups of hot water. We close the lid. And over here, there is a deal that says open and close. So we're going to turn that around to close where it is locked. This top deal up here has to be on exhaust at first. And I'm going to plug it in. And I'm going to select high. And I'm going to take my time up. This needs to go for 75 minutes for the pints. Now, if I was doing quarts, it would be 90 minutes. So I'm only doing 75 minutes, okay? And I push start. It's going to do its thing. It's going to try to get all of that up to pressure. And then when it beeps at me, when it has an E10, that means it has exhausted and it is doing its countdown. When it gets to E0, it's going to beep again. And then that means I need to move this to airtight. So I'll come back and let you know when that happens. All right, can you guys see that? It beeped at me and it said E10 and now we're at an E9. So that's going to count down. And then I will show you what we do next. All right, it beeped again. It's telling me my 75 minutes is starting. So up here on the top, get y'all up here where you can see. I have got to turn this airtight. Ah, that scared me, y'all. <laughs> There we go. Now we just wait. Now we just wait for 75 minutes. I'll be back with you. It's been 75 minutes. I'm going to let the pressure go down naturally. I have read online at different places that it's best to let this go for about an hour like it is. And then I'll come back and I'm going to prop this lid open for about 15 more minutes with just a spoon before I take anything out. So we're gonna let this go for about an hour and I'll be back. All right, our one hour is up. So I am going to switch this to exhaust. It's already exhausted like me. <laughs> gonna open very carefully. There's some steam. Ooh, yep, that is hot. Okay, here's what we are gonna do. I was told to do this. That way, the rest of that steam can get out. Now I understand why it is hot. So we're going to let that sit like that for about 10 minutes. All right, it's time to take these out. That got rid of a lot more of that steam. It's bubbling still. That's a good sign. Now I'm going to show you. I didn't put any liquid in there. Do y'all see that? That liquid is all the way to the top. You can make pork tacos. You could make sandwiches, Philly sandwiches. Mm -mm -mm. So we're going to wait and see how many pop. 
and then put them on well i'll take the rings off and i'm going to wash them down real good label them and put them on my pantry shelf y'all go make you some canned pork butt bye